What's truly amazing about microprocessors is their size. About 50 transistors would fit on the width of this hair. Millions of transistors have to be fit onto a piece of silicon, no larger than a dime. And they're like miniature 20-story high skyscrapers, with circuits going over and ducking under the different floors. It takes hundreds of engineers, months of painstaking work, to design a new microprocessor. Greg Wyant is an Intel engineer who helped explain the design process to us. I spoke to him recently about what's involved. There's four main development stages that you need to worry about when you're designing a microprocessor. There's the architectural design stage, there's logic design, there's circuit design, and finally mass design. This is the layout that all four work on? or Actually, it starts out an architect is, is the first uh, set of people that work on it. And what the architects are responsible for is specifying what are the features that you want inside the chip. Think of the architect of a microprocessor in much the same way as you think of an architect on a building. They're the people that come up with how tall is the building going to be, how many floors do you want in the building, is it going to have elevators, is it going to have stairs. The next team, the logic team, is responsible for taking those features that the architect specified and actually putting the logic blocks together. So you could say they're the builders? They're the builders. The circuit designer is the one that says, all right, I understand what the logic designer wants to do, but I need to build this physical circuitry connect up the transistors that are going to perform that function. How do they get all this information from this, this sheet onto something that small? Well, that's the role of the mass designers, which is the last step in the process of building a microprocessor. All this information is captured in a computer. And so they go through, they test the design on the computer, it's simulated. You often hear people talk about simulating aircrafts or a new car right. or something like that. Same thing happens for microprocessors. Once they think they've got the design right, it then goes to a mass designer who's responsible for translating this information into the physical location that the transistors will sit on one of these chips. And so they create something called masks. So I had a total misconception on how these were built. I thought that there were people with tweezers picking up little dots and putting them on the chip. That's not how it goes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not how it's done. So the more transistors or, or building blocks you have, the better the product's going to be? That's exactly it. So the more complex microprocessors have more transistors enabling them to do um, a lot more things. The building behind me is a fabrication plant or fab. Now it's such a sensitive environment that employees are about the only people allowed any closer than this. The rules are understandable though. The clean room, which is the area inside the fab where the chips are actually manufactured, has to be a thousand times cleaner than a hospital surgical room. But earlier, I did talk to an engineer who explained the fabrication process. Oh my god, this is super heavy. <laughs> Definitely. Well, what do you do with this? Basically, this is what the, most of our processors are made out of. Silicon ingot. And actually, silicon is derived from one of the most common material on Earth, which uh -huh. is from sand. So what, what happens? You've got the ingot, and then how do you make the wafers? What we do is we basically use a diamond saw and then slice the ingot into polished wafers. What are the things I see on the top of the wafer? We do a very specific processing steps to create patterns on these wafers. So these are the actual circuits and transistors? Yes, but you can't see them because if you can take a closer look uh -huh. at it, some of these have repeating patterns. Each one of them is actually a processor. And within it, they have anywhere from tens of thousands to millions of transistors on them. So in order to make sure that all of them function properly, we had to make our processing factory very, very clean. In order to make these complex chips with millions of transistors on them, we need a special place to do it. This special place is called FAB, short for Fabrication Facility. And within it, there's a place called Clean Room, and that's where all the processing is done. All the people inside the Clean Room wear special suits, um, something almost like a space suit. They also wear special booties, helmets, and gloves. So it's quite interesting to go in and take a look at the fab um, because everybody looks like they're from outer space. Now you may ask why we need the clean room. It is because our chips are so small now and our circuits are so tiny that unless we take care in avoiding all particles, such as particles in the air, dandruff, particles from your sneezes, all of them could fall onto the wafer and therefore ruin your entire chip. The robots are there to help us automate, meaning automatically process these wafers. The robot will automatically pick up the wafers, put them in the machine, and process them. 
Well, what are the technologies that you use in the fabrication process? Well, actually, if you look at it, it's actually a very simple four-step process in which we lay our patterns onto the wafer. And then what we do is we combine these different four processes to create what we call the skyscraper or a city onto these wafers. First, we deposit a layer of material onto the wafer. This material can be either a conductor or an insulator. Second, we deposit another layer of material called photoresist onto the wafer. This photoresist is a light sensitive chemical. This is how we're going to create our circuits now. What we do is we put a mask over our material. This mask contains images of our circuits. We then expose the mask to some special kind of light, which would then expose the photoresist. Third, we will then etch the photoresist away using very strong chemicals. In that way, it will also directly etch the material below it. And that's how you get the patterns that we saw on the wafer. Exactly. Because we cannot deposit material at will, meaning anywhere we want. That's why we had to slowly build up the material by putting it everywhere we can on the wafer and then taking away the material we don't want. So it's like somebody carving or whittling. Def definitely. Okay. That's, that's the way it goes. Now after we're done with this, the fourth step is what we will do to embed different kinds of material into that layer to change its characteristics. Finally, we'll remove the unneeded photoresist, and then we start the process all over again. So even though this wafer, I mean, to me it looks really flat, but it's actually got layers and layers of materials on them? That's right. Some of our latest um, processors are actually very, very thick. So if you think about a skyscraper, it is actually quite tall.